How is it going, YouTube? Morgan's here. So we are going to be talking about components, but this video is going to be basically targeting the new players to Grim Dawn. As I'm making this video, actually, there's Steam sales for winter 2020, uh, well, 2021 almost now, is going on. And there, there are lots of people that are jumping into Grim Dawn, and I had a components video, you know, three years back, which which I was um, very fond of, kind of. Like, it's I, I think I find it extremely useful for new players that are jumping into this game, and I'll explain in a second. I wanted to basically update that and, and maybe remake it, kind of like, um, you know, for, for the new year coming up, and at the same time, for the latest patch that is available for Grim Dawn. So why do I say that, like, it is very useful is the fact that, like, components is one of those things in this game that can actually be quite intimidating um, at the very start of, in the game. Uh, and at the same time, they're incredibly big when it comes to the impact that they have on your character. So, this being said, like, you know, a character that is equipping all the items, but no components at all, or if they're on the same level with, you know, complete components, the same, the same itemization, let's say, there's a really drastic difference, especially when it comes to, like, fine-tuning your character. The components are playing a big part in this. So, what I mean by that is, like, fine-tuning... Let's say you're, you know, missing this or that uh, specific resistance jumping into like Act 2, for instance. You would like to have some bleed, some pierce resistance. Uh, later on, you would like to have a little bit of like ether resistance, perhaps, or maybe even the others. You could definitely like try and like fix these and target these things with, um, with components. And especially while leveling at the early game, if you are able to control the components guys you will be also able to you know never mind the most part about like itemization and you will be able to like focus on just the offensive part of the itemization so let's say you're dealing fire damage you'll be able to just like say all right my resistance that are all right thanks to because of you know using uh, good components in good slots and then afterwards you'll be able to go use offensive items instead uh really hope this made sense for the new players that are coming into Grimdown. Now let's talk about like how do we utilize these things and I, I, afterwards I'm going to be basically giving you some sort of like an honorable mention when it comes to specific components what I use in the early game. One thing that I can tell you is that like when you have an item let's say like a pence I would like you to pay attention to the left hand side in my bank right now in my stash. Some stuff are being highlighted as I like hover over my pence. One thing that I'll tell you right now is that when you press control, you can actually like hide the tooltip of the item that you're mouse, mouse overing. So thanks to that, you will be able to, you know, see which components are highlighting and, you know, take a look at them. See like what you can use in your pens. Definitely. This is one of the tips. Uh, the only downside to this is that like you need to be wearing this item. So if I like mouse over this guy, uh, neither the control is going to work, nor the highlighted system is going to work on the components. So I'll need to like wear this, and then afterwards when I mouse over it, you'll be able to see like which components I'll be able to put on top of the gloves that I'm wearing, right? That's a very good and useful, uh, you know, trick to like use basically to spot things fast later on, or in the early on, you would be able to spot something that's, you know, and compare the components that you would like to use. That specific item, let's say. Uh, Act 1 really plays a big role in your, let, let's say, like, progression in both the components and your itemization. Simply because, like, around the outskirts, you will be able to find a quest which is, you know, leading to a blacksmith. Which is, you know, somebody that is capable of crafting these components. More over that later. Uh, but one thing that I can tell you right now is that, like, the search bar over here is extremely useful. Not only you can write something like belt or like armor, let's say. So these pieces that you see are going to be all usable in every single armor. Or maybe you can write fire resistance. As you can see, these are going to be everything about fire resistance. Or you can write elemental resistance. You know, blacksmith is extremely useful in that sense. And he will be able to, you know, craft some of the components that is not necessarily capable of dropping in the game either. So that's very useful too. But definitely utilize the search bar over here. You could definitely write any name of the components or even the stats that you're missing. For instance, you can write offensive ability. You can write... Um, you know, scroll down to the components afterwards, you can definitely write, you know, get, you get the point, pierce resistance perhaps, 
And it, then the list continues and on. Another thing that is about the Act 1 is that around Barovich, uh, Barwich Village, later on, you'll be able to rescue this apprentice over here. This apprentice is capable of, you know, either taking the components out of an item or taking the item out and, you know, destroying the components so that, like, you can use a new component on the item. Now, if you think about it this way and, like, let's say you are level 15 or, like, level 17 or something, uh, the item that you're carrying or, like, wearing is not necessarily probably... It's probably not necessarily, um... Let's say, like, importance at all. That's, that's the easiest way to put it. What I'm trying to say is that, like, you will probably end up selling this item regardless. So, no matter what item it is that you're wearing at level 17, you should be able to put any component on it. Uh, you know, trying to save a component doesn't necessarily make any sense at all, because you will be able to save it regardless. Uh, thanks to this apprentice right over here that you're going to be saving. It's towards, like, the midsection of, like, Act 1, let's call it. And what you do is extremely simple. You put an item on, onto the salvage parts and you will be able to keep the add-on, which is keeping the components. So it will give me my ancient armor plate in this case. But in the process, it will be destroying the item. Or I can keep the item and obviously it's going to be destroying the component on it so I can like put a new component on it. But, you know, the keeping the item part doesn't necessarily go for... You know, it's not that useful until the very end of the game, simply because, like, most of the items, I found the word that I was searching for, are not necessarily relevant until the end of, of, the, of the game, let's say. So during the leveling, I wouldn't really worry about the items so much. Uh, and thanks to the apprentice over here, you'll be able to keep all the components um, that you're finding, and you'll be able to, like, you know, take them out of the items, regardless of the um, usage or not. So there's no, there's no point saving them in your bank, or like saving them in your stash, just go ahead and use components everywhere so that like you're at your maximum at all times. Because make no mistake, the game is definitely balanced around this. Let's jump into and like mention a couple of, you know, honorable mentions when it comes to this. I want to talk about this guy a little bit later on, but the first things that I'm going to say is that like, this list is basically the components that I'm using while I'm leveling item, uh, while I'm leveling alts, let's say. And, and this list is... Let's say six watch, you can definitely craft this from your blacksmith. It doesn't even require a recipe. Your blacksmith, you know, default, he will know this. It's called six watch. I'm usually using at the very least two. You can use all the way up to three, which is like shoulders, chest, and leg armor. It is going to be fixing like your pierce resistance, your bleed resistance, and it starts from all the way down from level 15. You will probably need this about like level 18, level 20, depending on like how much you have grinded in Act 1. I would say you don't really need it so much in Act 1, the pierce and the bleed. But starting from Act 2, you should definitely start use, utilizing the six watches in your, um, in your you know, chest, pants, or shoulder, shoulder pads, let's say. Another one that I'm going to mention is going to be Antivenom Salve. This is very big as well. It's simply put, fixing your poison resistance and giving a little bit of armor. I really like putting this to the belt because belt is a global armor piece uh, and it's going to be increasing the armor that your belt gives by 24 every single time so that like that is going to split into the entire armor and give you know increase the global armor that you're going to be receiving from the belts by that much more and on top of that you'll be fixing your poison resistance too i use about like two or three into venom salve it depends kind of on the character that you play some characters are missing more poison resistance than the others you know occultist comes comes to mind that like it it has no problem at all with poison resistance whatsoever for the most part of the game. Um, but yeah, most of the time when I'm leveling an alt, these two I 100% use. Another mention is going to be Void Stone. Extremely big. And I think I actually didn't mention this on my old video, which was not necessarily the best thing to do. Void Stone is coming with a default uh, recipe as well, so your blacksmith will know it from the beginning. And I use two of these, which is... Amethyst and metal slots, if you pay attention to it, is bleed, elemental, and movement speed. 6%. It's incredibly big, you guys. And you can start using this from level 7 for whatever reason. You'll be able to fix, you know, the entire elemental resistances and bleed resistances by just putting this on top of your metal and on top of your amulet. Now, back to the beginning, what I said, thanks to this, just two... You know, we, we will be getting onto more components, but just these two void stones are capable of giving you 36% elemental resistance and bleed resistance and 12% movement speed. 
So thanks to this, you don't necessarily care about these stats so much from the items that are dropping on the floor, and you will be able to care about like the offensive part of your character, just because using the right components in the right slots while living. Another mention is going to be towards Corpse Dust. Uh, Corpse Dust is not a craft actually, it's it's a very common drop. I'm pretty sure while you're watching this video, if you play to like level 12 or something, you will have a couple of them. In fact, I have like 1.4k or something here. And um, Corpse Dust is usable on your rings. It gives you a little bit of HP, a little bit of vital resistance. Another mention for the rings could be like Mark of Illusion. Uh, the Mark of Illusion is something that I use specifically when I'm playing like a caster or like an elemental damage type of character. So like cold, fire, lightning, or all of them at once. I do prefer using Mark of Illusion in this case. Otherwise, I usually end up using Corpse Dust, to be honest with you, on my rings. So we have necklace, metal, we have the rings covered, we have pants, chest and shoulder. Um, you know, anti venom salve is kind of up to you, you could definitely use it on your belt, you could use it on your um, pants, you could use it, you know, gloves and boots. Uh, but let's talk about like what we can put over the boots and the gloves. So this is yet another common drop, the unholy inscription, it's not necessary to craft it at all. You will probably end up finding it quite easily. So Unholy Inscription is capable of giving you Vitality and Bleed Resistance, and it's used on your gloves. But it's not the biggest deal to be missing these, thanks to the Corpse Dust to begin with as well. So if you if you would like to use something else, you could definitely do that trick of like, you know, hiding, and like checking out what is highlighted, and maybe even just use Antivenom Cell on your gloves as well. More often I actually end up using Antivenom Cell over the Unholy Inscription. If I want to play extremely offensive with like a melee guy, it is also possible to use something like Restless Remains, which is giving you a little bit of like energy and at the same time life leech. So the life leech is very interesting in the early game uh, if you have like good damage and therefore you will be sustaining your character a little bit better. So I will mention the Restless Remains a little bit here too. So lastly, let's talk about Mark of the Traveler. I always suck finding this thing, so I'm just going to write it here. <laughs> So this is the one that I put on my boots, guys. It's, it's giving you a little bit of like slow resistance and movement speed. Movement speed is the king when it comes to like leveling alts or leveling to begin with. In this game, there's a movement speed cap of 135, so you cannot go over this. So perhaps like check if you're close to the cap before using a Mark of the Traveler on your boots, because if you're already at the cap, you might as well use something else such as Antivenom Tile once again. Um, so the last mention is going to be the head head slots. This one actually like requires you to learn a recipe. If you're very new to the game, you won't know how to craft this. It is capable of dropping, but it's quite rare drop. Uh, so it is definitely possible that you do not have this yet. And it is from the Rovers, but you will need to be respected. It's called Runestone. So you can get this blueprint from Rovers Respected. And you will be able to craft this from your blacksmith afterwards. It gives you ether resistance, elemental resistance, a little bit of armor. And obviously, if you're an elemental damage dealer, you'll be able to deal a little bit more damage as well. And that's usually my go-to um, um, components every single time that I'm leveling up. Honestly, there's there's you know no exception at all. So once you obviously learn the blueprint on your account, if you're softcore or hardcore, it will be you know learned by the blacksmith. And no matter like which character you create. The blacksmith will always know it. So if you're new to Grim Dawn, the, the, the blueprints are learned only once. But they, they belong to either softcore or to hardcore. So like if you want to start over, start fresh, you can actually like go to hardcore and everything will be wiped. I'm going to be closing the video with mentioning one more thing. It is not a component, but it's the relic slots. Most of the time, you know, new players in Grim Dawn, they run around without a relic in their relic slots. For a really long time, sometimes even all the way up to like level 60 or something until they craft something for themselves. There's like a tricky way of getting um, a relic in this game, in fact. Let me see if I have it in my bank first, so that like we know what we're talking about. And then afterwards I'll also show you how to get it. It might actually be like on my alts, but I don't think so. Yeah, I have it over here. It's the Bone Talisman. I have, I basically have like two parts, I, I think on my third, the third one is on my alt. But anyways, you'll be understanding the point here. So, there are three difficulties in Grim Dawn. This is normal, elite, and then ultimate. Uh, the normal version is going to be giving you the bone talisman that is for level 18. And that is usually 
the level that you're about like here where i am right now is this waypoint over here the arcovian foothills and when you reach over here after like leaving the Devil devil's crossing in act two there are going to be two quests right over here so this is the waypoint and this guy called graven he's going to be giving you a quest that will want you to find an elder in fact and after finding the elder you will have the option to lie to this guy the elder is going to end up giving you a relic and when you come back to this guy to complete your quest, you will have the option to lie to this guy saying that basically you did not find a relic with the Elder. And if you choose to do so, you will have a penalty of reputation received, a tiny little bit, to robbers. So this faction, right over here, is going to be having a tiny little bit less reputation gain from this specific quest. But in return, you will be having um, this Bone Talisman as a reward. So you will be able to play with Bone Talisman. What this does is it gives you tiny little bit of like stats upgrades, not nothing special. The special part about this is the money infusion. It's the granted skill, and this is incredibly big for every single character out there, except the summoner, I should say, because the all damage percentage that it's going to be giving you for ten second duration is not going to be working for your pets, assuming your pets are scaling from pet bonuses. But if you're, if you're dealing the damage by yourself with your character or dealing the damage with the pets that are scaling off you, uh, this is incredible. Because at the very early game, 100% all damage means almost double damage since you don't necessarily have all that much multipliers, if that makes sense. In Elite, you will be able to get the same relic, but even better, and it will be for level 35. Um, in Ultimate, you will be getting the level 50 version. Now, the funny part is that in Ultimate, you will be probably a lot higher than level 50, but when you get this relic, you can put this into the bank and never lie to these dudes again. And whenever you create a new character in an alt, you can just like grab these relics from your bank. And at level 50, using the ultimate version of Ivory Talisman is extremely big. I cannot wait to hear from you when you try that out. It is incredible. You can basically like two shot bosses and stuff. Because if I'm not mistaken, it's about like 500 percentage all damage increase, and some of the characters are gaining a lot of damage from that at level 50. Um, so one last thing is going to be going for Sanctified Bone. I think this is a rare drop as well, so I'm not necessarily sure if you're gonna have it when when you check your bank out if you have it or not. But the chest and the head armor could be gained by Tetra resistance or Chaos resistance. Um, you know, really useful. Let me see if you can craft this. I'm not necessarily sure. Yeah, you can apparently craft this guy with, like, bindings. To be perfectly honest with you, I would never, ever spend my bindings to craft a sanctified bone. I don't necessarily like this so much either. But if you find yourself in a spot where you're missing, you know, drastically missing vitality or chaos resistance as early as level 24, it doesn't really make any sense to me. You can go ahead and use a sanctified bone as well. But as I said, like most of the time for my chest, I end up using a six watch and for my helm, I end up using a rune stone. So a rune stone you will be able to craft from your blacksmith just like that. I really hope the video was useful. Thank you very, very much for watching. Remember to leave, leave a like, please. It definitely helps the video uh, for its visibility. And the chances are, while you're watching this, I'm actually live on uh, Twitch streaming, uh, twitch.tv slash uh, Check me out if you would like to. Thanks again for watching. Peace out, YouTube. Take care.